Myself and my stagey fiancé Erin James, who also works in the theatre industry and is very handsome, are headed back to our second trip ever to New York. Today's travel is complicated by... Do you want to full screen that and then show us... This. We're on Broadway right now. So we've had Applebee's, we've got changed, and we have headed into Manhattan. And we went to two of our favorite shows from our last trip, Shucked and Kimberly Akimbo, at which point I managed to lose my vlogging microphone outside of the booth theater. So right now, this is all I have, and this is what I am vlogging with. Um, but we're gonna make it work. Oh my God, hey. Hello. This stop is 12th Avenue and West 46th Street. Good. Um, we're on a bus. I still have, I still have this going on. We're on a bus. We've had our first Manhattan bus experiences today. Yeah, we have. Um, so today we left the hotel, left Margaritaville, went to go and get, uh, we went out for breakfast and ended up getting like brunchy breakfast sandwiches from Lenwich, which we love. So, yeah, great for doing free as well. And just like completely customizable, like you will have the best sandwich of your life yeah. because you get to choose everything. Like there's so many different breads, so many different sauces, like all the options, uh, which was great. Then we went to go and take our stuff to our friend Ashley's, who we're staying with for the rest of our trip. Um, and then we came back into Manhattan almost immediately to go on the Circle Line cruise from Pier 83, which we did last time at the end of our trip, and we're doing this time near the beginning. We were saying, like, in London, because of the Thames and that creating space and the buildings not being so oppressively tall everywhere, it's easier to get a sense of the skyline and the city. And in New York, unless you do one of those viewing platforms, or go on something like the Circle Line cruise that goes all the way around uh, New York Harbor, then it's hard to get a sense of it. You're gonna see right up the street here on the left is Wall Street. Now that used to be a wall walling off the lower part of Manhattan, which was from 1624, where the Dutch first settled from the whole rest of the island, which was basically just farms and Indian villages. This is Wall Street, it curves around to the left. We're gonna see Friendly Church up there, the richest church in America. And it's rich because Queen Anne, King Queen Anne gave the land to Trinity Church and they rent it out to all these financial institutions. So keep looking to the left. Get ready. It's right, it's right up there. Get ready to take this picture. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I'll tell you where to pull the curtain. Get ready, get ready. Right there. Trinity Church is where Alexander Hamilton is buried. Did you get it? Because we're going to see it on the way back too. There you can see the Edge and just about the Empire State Building, both of which we are due to be visiting next week, which is exciting. There you go, better view of the Empire State Building. Coming into view there as we circle Manhattan. Once again, we are consistently surprised, just not as tall as we were expecting. Is that is that sacrilege to say? I don't know. Still very impressive, very very green. Not very tall. I mean, as far as as far as ladies go, you know, she's up there. So that area over there in Brooklyn is Dumbo, and if you've ever seen the people posting on Instagram, including ourselves, of the view of this bridge between two rows of buildings, over there is where you go to take that picture. was 
fun. Did you have a personal highlight of the Circle Line cruise today? Not particularly, just nice seeing the skyline. Consistently surprised by how short the Statue of Liberty is. Oh, and I managed to get Trinity Church in a photo, which was fun. Yeah, I missed that completely last time when he was like, take the photo now. I fully didn't even see it. And this time I was like, ah, I see it. Trinity Church, where Hamilton is buried, for musical theatre fans. And now we are, we were going to walk, but we just didn't have enough time. So we're in a bus over to Haswell Greens for a press event. Because uh, we're going to a press event, which is a little bit mad, um, for the Broadway-bound musical How to Dance in Ohio, opening at the end of this year, coming this season to Broadway, and we're going to go and find out a little bit more about it. So, not sure how much we can show you, but that's what we're on our way to now. Isn't life mad? Okay, the day continues. So, when did I speak to you last? We found Ashley. We've been hanging out with all the people because we went to a press event for the Broadway-bound musical How to Dance in Ohio, which was very exciting and moving. It was great getting to hear about sort of the composition of the show and how it got adapted from a documentary. I feel like that's still kind of pretty untrodden ground in the world of musical theatre. Um, I'm still holding this. This is ridiculous. This is an untenable vlogging solution, but we're making it work. We then went to, uh, I can't say mums, but I also can't mums. say- Mums, mums. We went to mums, um, which was great. I had an amazing fried chicken sandwich and we had Back to the Future themed drinks that came with little skateboards after going to a press event where we got little fidget spinners. Like it's been a great day of novelty wheeled items. <laughs> It has! Now we're walking to New World Stages to go and see Dracula, a comedy of terrors, is the official... It's that way. This is where we're going. No, I lied. No, it's here. It's on the set. Yeah. I thought we were on the first. I apologize. Gershwin. Yeah, no. I know. I, th I remember things. We came here last time to see Anthony Rapp's show. Without you. Without so you. Good. No. Um, and this, I imagine yeah. to be like ex almost exactly the same vibes. Same, same I felt this is good, yeah. Same energy. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's basically I can't the same wait show. Sing seasons of love. <laughs> <laughs> and of an iconic gay actor. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'll cover you. Open brackets in blood. Close brackets. <laughs> we are at New World Stages to see Dracula, a comedy of terrors. So this used to be a cinema. So it has five stages, five theatres. This is what we need in the UK. Like talking to all Western producers, please create one of these in the UK because the concept of having a venue that has five small theatres for us <laughs> is just incredible and we need it. And here are the different cocktails. So there's a mix for all the different shows. So the two for Dracula, a Dracula's perfect type and Dracula's original mother circuit. What a fun name. And here is the merch. Look at that. You've got t-shirts, you've got anything mugs, with purple colour scheme. You've got posters, you've got magnets, you've got chatter teeth. Yeah, yeah, I like chattering teeth. That's what you saw. <laughs> I was really up close in your face, I apologize. Uh-oh. I want to be in both. I want to be in both. <laughs> We're here. We've got our playbills in our seats from the third row. Look at this set design. I was just saying that like her jit has been spent on this show. And again, it makes me so excited that there's five theaters in this space and this is one of them. It's madness. Oh my god, hey! Hello! It's a new day here in New York. Is it Tuesday? It's... Yeah, it's Tuesday. It's October 3rd. It is. Oh my god, hey, I'm actually wearing the Mean Girls polo shirt that I bought on Sunday at the Broadway flea market. Um, but you can't really tell because I've gone for a black and pink um, bad Cinderella thing. I'm wearing this because we're going to see Here Lies Love later and I wanted to wear a bucket hat. 
and I wanted to wear something like cool and clubby, which <laughs> this, is, this is my interpretation of that, at least. This is what all the kids are wearing. It's fine. You're lucky I'm not wearing my fashionable cabaret dressing gown that I also got at the flea market that I'm trying to make a fashion statement. But um, it's a coincidence that I'm wearing the Bad Cinderella hat today with a uh, pink trouser also, because apparently, and I hadn't realized this until our friend Ashley reminded us, it was a year ago today that we got the iconic I'm not your Cinderella, I'm your bad Cinderella press conference moment. Yes. And what a year it's been. What a year it's been. Um, so we may be finding a way to pay homage to that later. For now, we've been chilling in Brooklyn, yeah. having a nice morning, catching up on work, videos, editing, all that good stuff. And now, as you may recognize, we're walking up the High Line. Yeah. We've just been to where, Aaron James? Posh Pop. Posh Pop Bake Shop, home yeah. of all things delicious and gluten-free. And now we are heading up the High Line where hopefully we're going to go to the uh, the, the camera shop that we've been recommended, B&H, in order to buy a new vlogging microphone because this is getting ridiculous ahead of an evening at a Broadway show. It's a seven o'clock curtain tonight, which is like a thing on Tuesdays, Yeah, I think. Tuesday, seven o'clock. Um, but much like last night, a seven o'clock that's only one act an hour and a half long, so we'll be done by 8.30. Can I just say that I'm getting very freaked out by the fact we can see the edge right in front of us, and I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> You'll be fine. I mean, it does look, it does look quite intense, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not something I would have chosen. We'll be fine. We'll be absolutely fine. Um, that's all to come next week. You've got like more than a week to prepare yourself emotionally. I've got more than a week to find a backup person. <laughs> anyway, we are heading uptown via, we're heading to Midtown via the High Line. Um, I just realised the reason it looks so different is these trees did not have leaves through the last year, I don't think. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Nature is healing in New York. Okay, we're now up in the middle of the theatre district by the Richard Rogers, where Hamilton uh, is playing. And we've made a, a couple of dubious choices, nothing too catastrophic, but like, as a note, the High Line, which was a little quieter last time we came here, is not the best tool for getting somewhere at speed. Honestly, because you don't have to cross the streets, it's probably still faster, but there's bits of it that are very thin, so you may end up stuck in some walking traffic with tourists or just slow walking people. Um, and then also the store we were hoping to go to is closed. Are we coming through this way? This way? Yeah. Yes. We're using one of the one of the cut throughs in the theatre district, which is the Hotel Edison. Um, yeah, the store we were hoping to go to is fully closed all of this week, which is a challenge. So handheld microphone it is. Um, and also, we just realized we've done an awful lot of walking before a show where we're going to be standing. Questionable decision, but should be fine. If you're curious about that comment I just made about standing, it's because we're going to see Here Lies Love, where there are two types of ticket that you can get. And we have standing tickets, which means uh, kind of like the current Western revival of Guys and Dolls. Uh, we are going to be standing in and amongst the action in a nightclub type setup. They have done a major 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 very expensive renovation of the Broadway theatre uh, which is another new theatre for us on this trip because yeah. last time we were here they were renovating it for this show um, and so yeah we have standing tickets rather than seated tickets and we've been told it's really like two completely different shows depending on which one you pick so very intrigued and excited and a little bit anxious about the fact my feet are already tired. In the few days we've been here, we haven't really made it this far uptown, but you can see the Walter Kerr Theatre, where Hadestown is playing. We saw that on our last trip. Passing Chicago, passing the Book of Mormon, because we're heading to the Broadway Theatre, which is one of the northmost of the theatres in the Theatre District in Midtown Manhattan. I heard a story once that people used to turn up to this theatre's box office, because it's just called the Broadway Theatre. People used to turn up to this box office and ask for tickets to like 
all of the shows because they thought that's where you go to. They thought they were all playing at the Broadway theater because it'd be like wicked um, at a Broadway theater or wicked on Broadway. And yet it's just one of the many theaters. Um, so you can only go there if you're buying tickets for Here Lies Love. We've stopped here because this is, it's not the Dwayne Reed, it's the Ann L. Bernstein Theatre and the Jerry Orbach Theatre behind us, where the perfect crime is playing. This is an off-Broadway show that's been running for decades with the same one actress in the show for decades. Yeah, they've got a poster about it. I'm intrigued about it as a concept. We can also see the Winter Garden Theatre where Back to the Future is playing. This is another new opening since our last visit. And they have a store, one of a few shows to have their own dedicated store, such as their enormous commercial popularity. What's really intriguing and interesting is seeing Broadway in a completely different configuration than the last time we were here because these two theatres were dark last time, getting ready for these shows, and now um, shows that were open when we were here not that long ago, all things considered, um, are now dark, uh, even though they had, they had shows in at the time. You get what I'm saying. And then, as promised, here it is on Broadway, hence the name. This is the Broadway Theatre where Here Lies Love is currently playing. The revolutionary new musical. Here it is. So intrigued to see this one. Definitely one of the biggest motivators for our trip. Definitely one of the most important shows for us to be seeing while we are here. We're gonna meet up with our friends and then head inside. So the show is starting at seven tonight. We're here just after six and I will tell you what I have been told by people who've seen the show, which is to get here an hour before to enjoy everything that is going on in this theater. And they open the house now before. Not every theater on Broadway is doing that. In fact, very few of them seem to. So, um, passing on the advice that I have been given to you. The time is 6.18 ahead of a 7 p.m. show and they have just opened the house to let us in. This is pink. Oh, I'm loving the chandeliers. And we can already hear the music playing. There is, there are fans that go in. Then drinks, yeah. And oh, there's a historical overview. So I'm gathering this tells you all about the history Oh, it does. It tells you the whole history of Pillow's Love. So this is handy to know what's going on in the show, because we've been told that it's sung through. So many drinks. So many drinks. These sound quite fun. Quite like the sound of that one. Which one shall we get? This is the important thing to note. No drinks or snacks permitted on the floor or to floor side seats. So I'm drinking the Disco Peach Pop in Here Lies Love Cup. It's very nice. You can taste the Prosecco. I kind of wish the peach came through a little bit more. And here's a gallery of the different artwork. And each one has a description of what the picture is of. So this is Imelda's diorama, one childhood in Manila, 1930s. Imelda with her parents and a housekeeper. And you have the diorama too. So these are all the different dioramas all the way around, which then goes through the history of Imelda. T-shirts, bucket hats, they have pins. There's a fan, there's magnets, the book, it's all here. It's a full range and I've seen loads of people wearing this. And of course Mickey is obsessed with the bucket hat, which is the one version there, the one version over there. Well, it reverses into the two, you get my drift. Personal faves in this merchandise, the bag is very shiny. I like the t-shirt designs, I'd probably get the purple one myself, even though that burgundy is so my colour. Uh, but it's all about the bucket hat, where is it, there it is. Here we are. Mickey is now checking his bag in over there. And here we go. We just have to show our tickets to show where we're going. We go round here. It says enter. And in we go. Wow. Okay, this is so cool. We are on the floor in the Broadway theatre. That's where the seats are up there. This is the floor. This is crazy. This is crazy. And there's the DJ doing that thing. This is so cool! Sorry, I'm just really over them on I said that probably a lot. I mean, look up here, the lighting is like... It's crazy!
Oh my god, hey. Hello. It is Wednesday. It's yep. Wednesday, my dudes. It is Wednesday morning. What? No, it's not. It's the afternoon. That's It's from something. It is Wednesday, my dude. I don't know where that's from. I don't remember. Where are we going? I don't know. You turn. Should we go out the back because it's nice? Way, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're in the basement of Rockefeller Center? Rockefeller Plaza? Rockefeller Tower? This 30 is Rockefeller. No, this is Rockefeller Center. Rockefeller Plaza is where we're going to come out. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Uh, we're in the basement um, where Aaron's been getting a bagel from Black Seed Bagels. Is that what it's called? Black Seed yeah, Bagels? Black Seed Bagels. I know nothing today. There we go. This. this was one of my go to's that I'd go to for like a bagel kind of lunch breakfast. It's so good and it's gluten free. Woohoo! Although um, it's gluten, they do gluten free, but it's more for if you're a celiac, I probably wouldn't say go there because it's the same toaster thing. So if you're going intolerant, then it's fine, but just that's a having to note. There seems to be a lot more just like gluten optional awareness, but they don't necessarily, unless you clarify that it's an allergy, they won't assume, or I think more places in the UK will assume the other way. But I think, I don't know, maybe there's more people in New York that just are like preferably gluten free rather than as a, uh, a medical reason or an allergy or anything like that. Um, I got a giant breadstick. Um, that was the whole length of this bag, and I now just have the little bit at the top left. But it was so good. It was like parmesan and garlic. So nice. Where are we going? This way. That is very much not an ice skating rink at the moment. Do we go out this way? I think we go this way. We can't go up there. We're a little lost. We're gonna go this way. It is a plain gluten-free bagel and it's a tuna melt. So it's Swiss cheese and tuna and I think like onions and bits like that. Yummy. Aaron's gonna sit and eat his bagel because um, we're a little bit tight for time while I go and try and get the second part of my breakfast slash lunch. It's after midday, it's like, it's coming up to half one. It's definitely lunchtime. I've had a cheese breadstick and now I I'm uh, trying to find my way back to Magnolia Bakery. We passed it on the way here. And I want the world famous, it's like banana pudding, I think. I had it last time. I discovered it a little late in our trip last time. And now this time, I know about it in advance. Oh, we're gonna go past Radio City Music Hall, which I think means we're in the right place. Yes, I believe so, from what I remember. Here it is as we approach Radio City Music Hall. Home of the Tony Awards for many years, although not this year, they were uptown, and not next year, because today, just this morning, it has been announced that next year they will be taking place at Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center, very much part of the Midtown Theatre District, and not Radio City Music Hall. Mickey. And Julia at, bay bay, at the Stephen Sondheim Theatre, which is a little incongruous, but you know, excited about the show and excited yeah. about going to the Stephen Sondheim Very Theatre. To We've been it. to the Sondheim Theatre in the UK, yeah. in London, but never the Stephen Sondheim. Yeah, so we're going to take off both. Look at the sign. So we've both seen Anne Juliet before. Yes. Quite a few times actually. I, saw, I, I hadn't seen it for ages until like post pandemic and you then watched it quite loads. a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like it caught up to the hype, whereas you've seen it. I saw it pre West End in Manchester, yeah. and I saw it on its West End opening night, and we saw it on its like closing weeks. Yeah, we stood. We were even standing for this show. It's one of the few shows ever that we both stood for. And the sign, this is Stephen Sondheim Theatre. If you come to the front, you can see Sondheim's signature, which is just there. This is a gorgeous theatre. I actually, I think this might be one of my favourite exteriors of a theatre because it's so different. And now we're in the queue and they have these really cool boards on the way in. There is the cast. We're sat in orchestra C. Oh wow, we're up close. Yeah. Party time. And we found our seats and it is identical to the London production. It's a small box here, but basically identical. And this building is so modern, so different. 
I really, I really like this theatre. Look what we just found. We just found Jenna Russell and Daniel Evans when they were here. Do you know why? It's the name of Papa George. This is one of all the Sondheim shows that have ever been in this, this theatre. Theater. I think. Then we have My Fire, as in, you are my fire. This drink called Spark a Deep Burning Desire, but there are medications that can clear that right up. Uh, because we made it just the way you want it. You know, that way. That has tequila, campari, lime, agave syrup, agave? Agave? I don't know. And smoked chili bitters. That feels like a lot for a matinee, I'll be honest. Then we have the, oops, uh, this not-so-innocent cocktail will play with your heart, but you'll still want to do it again. Multiple Britney references. That has Jack Daniels, Tennessee whiskey, blackberry, lime, and rosemary sweet tea. I am intrigued. And then finally, the since you've been gone. This has frozen rose, vodka, organic strawberry, and peach What's syrup. And it says, Now you can get what you want. Just one taste is like breathing for the first time. You may even fall for a stupid love song. We also have this fun step and repeat towards orchestra left. Now, I like these. I like a theatre that includes a photo spot, and this one seems to have the space to do so. Not every Broadway and Western theatre does. This is cute. The next thing we need to prioritize if we're putting something like this in, think of the lighting people, because this is a great space. Horrible, horrible lighting, I will say. So the photos, and there were more on the other side, yeah. are all roundabout theatre company revivals of Sondheim is, shows. This is a roundabout theatre, Yeah. but Anne Juliet isn't my roundabout, this is like a rent out, because sometimes, like kind of what happened when we went to the Helen Hayes, yeah. that show was not by second stage, but they'd rented it, so yeah. that's the same here with Anne Juliet. Because I saw a picture of Follies, and I was like, that was at the Velasco, that was not here. Yeah. And here are all the covers. You have Britney on for Porsche Benvolio. That's the one that I hadn't really clocked earlier. We like a moving board. And we got the t-shirts. That's Mickey's. And here's mine. Yeah, we got the good. Two whole lots, and it really does cover. I remember not this much no, I of the Shaftesbury. Do everything's bigger on Broadway. Oh, you people, can't you see? Can't you see? Had a great time at Anne Juliet in the time since we've left you. Hopefully you've just seen a little snippet of our experience at the show on one of Aaron's theatre trip vlogs. Um, what else haven't I told you? in the time since I put my camera down. I had banana pudding from Magnolia Bakery, which was amazing. So, so good. I have no idea even what's in it beyond banana, obviously, but it's fantastic. It's like a religious experience. Then we saw Anne Julia at the Stephen Sondheim Theatre. I feel like a lot of the theatres we've seen on this trip have been different. Like a lot of the stuff we said yeah. last time, like they don't really have foyers and like, but like, it's, we just see a lot of different it's, spaces. It's because we've been to the newer ones. I think mean, that's the thing, we've been to a lot of the newer theatres, which Ooh. means they do have them. And I think that that makes a big difference. I feel like the newer ones have quite kind of have figured out what people need more or have evolved or... Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely getting more of an overview. Uh, now we're walking through Times Square to go and meet our friends for dinner at Bond 45. This Taco Bell sign, tell me that does not look like the sign on the Walter Kerr Theatre where Hades Town is. They look exactly the same. I'm sure at least one tourist a day is turning up at Taco Bell expecting Hades Town. <laughs> We're heading from 43rd, where the Stephen Sondheim is, up to 45th, where Bond 45 is. So, um, you can go through the Minskov Theatre, where the Lion King is. That will take you from 44th to 45th. Or you can go through Schubert Alley which we've spent a lot of time on Schubert Alley already this trip. We've just been hanging out at the stage door of the Stephen Sondheim trying to meet whom? Melanie LeBarry. Icon Melanie LeBarry. Yay for West End actors working on Broadway, bringing their amazing talent here and being amazing people. Um, I mean, she's a big part of why we went to go and see Anne Juliet yeah. today, because uh, you didn't get to see her in the UK. No, because I watched it later on. But you have seen her in what shows? 
uh, Matilda, so that's why I Wicked, said. and I'm missing one, Mary Poppins. There you go, there you go. So now you've ticked off the Mel Neela Barry bingo card. And I'm also seeing cast members from Some Like It Hot. And is that people waiting at a Kimbo? I think so. Is a Kimbo longer than Some Like It Hot? Maybe it is. Maybe today it is. Just crossed 45th and passed the exact spot where I lost my microphone the other day. I still can't see it there. I'm convinced the rats have taken it. Um, and we're now cutting through the Marquee Theatre. This mirrored wall here was all Once Upon a One More Time posters because last time we were here it was about to open and now this time when we've arrived it's just closed. So in the short months between our two Broadway visits this year, because we came back pretty quick, yeah. an entire show opened and then closed. Which is sad, but such is, such is life. Okay, that was amazing. Just had exceptional dinner at Bond 45, which plot twist is on 46th Street. Does that make sense? Answer, no. It used to be on 45th and they kept the name because I guess they thought people wouldn't understand. I questioned that choice, but the food, exceptional. And we were there to help them promote their new six themed booth, which is super cool. And there were like playbills on the table. There was a six themed cocktail and the food, so, so good. Um, um, Anyone. Aaron, what was your highlight of our meal at Bond 45? The mousse. The chocolate mousse. Kate, you had a religious experience with the chocolate mousse. It was so good. It was a really good mousse. It was like the best mousse. I would never order a mousse, but they put it on the menu as like their world famous mousse. And like, I've never met a famous mousse. That's a mousse that deserves fame. I can't argue with the fame of that mousse. That was a really great mousse. We're going to Aladdin now, and I've said the word mousse too many times. And we're a little bit late for the show. Both shows today, honestly, we've been dangerously close to curtain. So, hopefully everything will be fine. We're going to run to the new Amsterdam theater. If only we had a flying carpet. Go in without me. Go in without me. We're here for Aladdin! Wow, this was a Follies house and you can so tell by the glamour. Here's a merch. This is such a fancy merch booth. Wow, love it. Look at this auditorium. This is stunning. I understand what everybody raves about it. And we have our playbills. The show's about to start, but I'm in awe. I'm in awe. Look at all of these in the display case. There's even follies, there's all things that have appeared here before. And there's a Mickey Mouse. Oh my god, hey, it's Mickey Joe here to talk you through the featured show cocktails. We have an Agrabah Marketplace, which is aviation gin, melon liqueur, love that, cucumber mint syrup, again, cucumber syrup, uh, lime and tonic, then a desert bloom, vodka, elderflower, rose syrup, lemon, and I'm not even going to pronounce that, but it looks interesting, and then a whole new world, which has Jack Daniel's hazelnut liqueur, honey, lemon, and cinnamon fig bitters. Wow, that sounds exciting, doesn't it? I like the rotating lamp there. You can see a cup. Uh, now, the cups that come with the cocktails don't have an Aladdin design, so you may want to get this reusable cup here. We've got mugs. You can see Jasmine. She's had better hair days than the one she's currently experiencing. Uh, another bear, more lamp ornaments. This t-shirt is nice with the shining, simmering... Uh, simmering? <laughs> simmering. We're cooking today. Shining, shimmering, splendid there. That's for $40. <laughs> Oh my god, hey. Hello. 
It is a new day in New York yet again. It's Thursday today and we are on our way to the Westway Diner to go and meet a friend for dinner. Westway Diner, something of a New York institution, so we're told. We ate here last time. Last time we came for like breakfasty brunch. Yeah. This time we're coming for dinner. Was this a place you had something like eggy or potato or omelette? I had a big omelette that had like potato in it. There you go, all of the above, all of the above. But also, Hannah Waddingham went on American morning television the other day and said that this was her favorite place. I don't know yeah. if I like to eat at all in New York, or like her favorite diner in New York, but she's not here tonight because right now she's seeing a show in London. So we've been told she's at the opening night for Flowers for Mrs. Harris at Riverside Studios. So we won't run into her, we may run into others. Who knows, who's to say? But going to go and have dinner in New York Head of Merrily We Roll Along this evening at the Hudson Theatre, which is very exciting. I will be buying merch, I will be crying, I will be having a great time. This is maybe the most anticipated show of the trip because it's the one I'm the most confident I'm just gonna love. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I agree. I'm also intrigued because it's in an ATG venue. There you go. Have we not experienced an ATG venue on Broadway before? Nope, first time. There you go. Very intriguing. ATG, obviously, a big presence in the UK, set to merge with a Jujamson. with Jujamson, who are a big presence here on Broadway. We've been to some Jujamsons before. We've been to hold on, don't tell me the Walter Kerr, yep. August Wilson. Yep. Another one. Yeah. Hirsch for Hirschfeld. Yes. There you go. I'm great at this. Um, we're going to go get dinner at the Westway Diner, and I will show you what that's like. Come with us, virtually speaking, of course. Okie dokie, one lovely dinner at the Westway Diner later. I will say, if you want just like classic Manhattan diner with all of the choices, all of the like sandwiches, burgers. I had the Westway wrap, which was lovely. Had some lovely sauces. Um, one of those later. And we are heading over to the Hudson Theater. One of the few theaters that takes us to the other side of, is it the other side of Broadway? Or the other side of, the other side of Times Square at least. Yeah. Um, we are east of Times Square, of which there are fewer theatres, but one of them is here, the Hudson, for Merrily We Roll Along. We are so very excited, we need to go and pick up our tickets. Last time we were here, this was a doll's house with Jessica Chastain at this theatre, um, and she famously walked out the back doors at the end to go and visit the Museum of Broadway. Not actually. Um, and so yes, this will be another brand new theatre for us. We have so much to do, we have to go look at merch. Oh look, they've already got the marquee up for How to Dance No Higher. Look at that, look at that over at the Belasco. I will show you, hold on. See, there it is. So this is the Hudson, where Merrily is, with some slightly unsightly scaffolding. And then over there, How to Dance in Ohio. I do just love those quintessential Broadway light bulbs at the Belasco Theatre dance in red there on their title and then Aaron's head as he takes a photo. We're going to go and see the show now. I'm so excited because it's probably one of my favourite songs. It's up there, okay. yeah. It's definitely in my top five. Yeah, same. So now we're just in the queue. When we get in, Mickey's going to get our ticket and then we're going to go and take our seats to enjoy a show we know we love. And I've been a big fan of Lindsay Mendes for like a decade. So I'm very excited about that. This is like the most anticipated <laughs> show of our trip in the yeah. sense that of the ones we know we're gonna love it. We know yeah. we love this production, we know we love this material. These are, this is a great cast. This, this is our like, uh, treat to ourselves yeah. show. Yeah. And this is the first time we've been in a Broadway theatre that's owned by ATG, who are mainly known for West End theatres. So it'll be interesting to see how similar it is. We've been told they have an ambassador lounge similar to all the West End versions and tour and UK regional venues. I see Lindsay Mendes' name, I see Daniel Radcliffe's name, and I see Jonathan Groff's name. And they have a photo booth which has the cast on. So lo a lovely person just took a photo of them. And then the merch is over here. We have an old friends t shirt with the writing, it's slightly out like a song. Just poster here with all the photo cards. We have mugs, we have pens, magnets, a beanie. And we're here on the front row of the dress circle. This is our view. We're very excited. Look at this bar. It's gorgeous. Look at that, it's cute. More red, more blue, more beer. There we have. How cool is all of this? 
So the specialty cocktail is a little bit different here at the Hudson, but they are doing a three old friends, classic old fashioned for $20 and a tropical blue Hawaiian punch. Don't ask me why that's a specialty cocktail for Merrily We Roll Along, but it is $18 and it looks quite nice. We are actually getting uh, drinks and glasses. I believe this is the only Broadway theater where you will get this rather than plastic novelty cups. <laughs> Oh my god, hey. Hello. We just saw Merrily We Roll Along at the Hudson Theatre on Broadway, and as the kids would say, I am unwell. <laughs> the thing is, is I've spent so many years, and I don't know about you, seeing these revivals happening and seeing these shows happening, they'd be like, oh my gosh, I would love to go to that. Oh, yeah. And it seems so far away and so impossible. Yeah. And even earlier this year, we're like, oh, we'll have to come back for Merrily. I didn't know if we no, would. I didn't think we would. You, you don't dare to dream it may actually happen. And, and there we were, front row of the mezzanine watching Merrily Roll Along and now we are stood at the stage door and I'm gonna um, I'll, I'll film anything if anything exciting happens but I'm gonna tell you about how it works because it's uh, presumably one of the busiest stage doors on Broadway right now and it has um, a little bit of its own rules going on which would probably be helpful for people to know in advance so let me tell you so you can see the stage show itself is over there what's happening here is we are all behind a barrier stretching down this side um, I believe there are some actors who stay for a while and see people there are other actors who like to scarper off and that is all uh, within their discretion fairly enough there's an area down at the end there um, where other people are held who don't have tickets but if you can show tickets from the performance you get into this area here um, it's still a couple of rows of people deep so I'm not sure as and when people come out if everyone will get signages or whatever it is that they are looking for um, I think some security staff are explaining like managing expectations over at the front there but again I'm too far back to actually hear any of that so we're just gonna see what happens as and when exciting people begin to come out, we're going to hear about it from this crowd reaction. Okay, that thing I told you was going to happen just happened. I've heard people's reactions. I can't see who it is. I'm trying to zoom in on people's phones so that we, through the transitive power of technology, can work out who this... I can't... Is it Dan Radcliffe? Because he's short and that's why I can't see it? I don't know. People are actively crossing the street. I'm going to need someone to do some charades or something because this is... This is unclear to me. This is like a where's Wally of actors. I was crying, I don't know if you can see him yet, but on the basis that I heard people shrieking and it's not a tall man in a bicycle helmet, it's Daniel Radcliffe. There he is, signing playbills, taking photos, being a top chap. This girl is gonna get her forehead signed with a Sharpie. <laughs> Amazing stuff. <laughs> oh, I see. Another thing to note about this stage door experience specific to Daniel Radcliffe is he is not going to sign Harry Potter memorabilia because I have just watched someone uh, be refused by his bodyguard, who I think is his dedicated bodyguard, the one who's been with him since he was yeah, like a teenager, so. which I think is very, or since a, like a, a child, basically, since Harry Potter. Um, but yeah, he's not signing Harry Potter stuff. He is signing Merrily We Roll Along stuff because he is a musical theatre boy now. <laughs> and that was it for tonight at the Hudson Theatre Stage Door for Merrily We Roll Along. Just Daniel Radcliffe signing autographs, who was the person I thought was the least likely to actually be doing yeah, the stage door. So that was a fun surprise. Yeah. Oh my god, hey, and just like that, it is the end of our first week in New York on Broadway. 
I am ending this video here because um, we are getting ready to go on a road trip to a different state, which you're going to have to tune into the next video to see. Make sure you're subscribed to my theatre themed YouTube channel uh, so you don't miss this video as well. Ogie is also involved. Um, thank you for joining us for a week in New York. Apologies that this has been a slightly chaotic and threadbare video because I've got microphone chaos still going on, but hopefully uh, that will all get resolved. Um, but yay, hope you've enjoyed the New York content and I will see you very soon. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. Bye bye. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>